Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome to part two of the last video that I made while on an artist residency in Puebla, Mexico. If you watched last week's video, we made an indigo vat using henna as the reducing agent and we did some dip dyeing as well. So go check that out if you want to learn how to build a henna vat in your home studio. Today, we're going to go back to Puebla, and this time we're going to play around with a shibori technique. Do a little bit of folding and binding and see what kind of wonderful design we may be able to create with that henna vat. So let's jump back on that plane, get back to Mexico and see what amazing things that henna vat is going to bring to us in the way of a shibori tie-dye. for fun. Why not? I'm going to do a little bit of resist and that is known often as a shibori technique. So I'm going to play around with some cotton that I have and do some folds and some wraps in order to create some patterns. My fibers have been pre-treated and that's only because I have an inventory of fiber that's always ready to go. However, no, that not need a mordant if you're going to be working with indigo. I happen to have a cotton napkin and some chopsticks as well as some rubber bands. So I'm just going to do a quick fold and then put the chopsticks in as a resist to create some kind of design and then we can plop that into the indigo vat as well. Don't want to waste having a working indigo vat while I'm here. I only have a few weeks to enjoy it, so might as well see what we can make with it. One note, I do not have a iron, and you probably will want to iron your surface of your fiber so it's as flat as possible. Some people also use the iron to make their lines really crisp. I won't be able to do that here. So if you have an iron home and you want to do that, it's a great way to make really, really crisp lines in your folds. So many of the folds involved in shibori are based on accordion folds. So I've already folded this once just to kind of give me guidelines. And basically I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to be creasing these lines since I don't have an iron. And then I'm going to be accordioning this back. So taking that one side into the center and then doing the same on the other side. So I have a nice accordion fold, as you can see. Now for the triangle that I want to do, I'm going to just start folding these also in an accordion style one over the other, to make a nice 
triangle shape. And there we go. I have my triangle shape. It is not perfect. If you want it perfect, practice and use an iron. But this will work for me. I'm not a perfectionist, as you know, so this will be the fold that I want to work with. So I have different shapes and sizes of these chopsticks. I have some that are tapered. I have some that are just pretty much uniform across and then I have some plastic ones. Since I'm working with what I have, I'm just gonna mix and match these and not worry too much. Now, you can choose to put the resist on one side and then the opposite side. This is great, no problem. You would just rubber band these together. If you wanna add a little more resist, you can add another chopstick in between. So in the folds. And then this is just gonna give you a little bit of a stronger resist line on some of that interior fiber. So I'm gonna do that just to make it a little stronger. And it does take some effort for the die to get into some of these inner folds. So you're going to have some variation in color just because it's gotta get into all of these folds and the tighter you make it, the harder it is for the die to get in. But we're gonna just play with it and see what kind of fun design we can make. Okay, so I have that inner one and the outside and then I'm going to go ahead and put another one on this side to finish that resist. I'm going to put my binded fiber into water and just let that soak. And I'm actually just gonna put it in, let it soak overnight. And the only reason for that is because it's getting late and dark. And I'm going to continue the shibori dip dyeing tomorrow. The resist tied piece of cotton is wet, good and saturated, so it's ready to go in. Here we go into the dye pot. So I will actually move it gently around. Just hold it while it gets its first dip. All right, three dips with the bundled tied resist piece. I have just dunked it in water again to just hasten the oxidation. But now that this is my last dip, I'm only gonna do three. I will set it to be out in the sun and sort of oxidizing. And then I will open it up 
and let that oxidation get into the interior. And not quite sure how far that dye made it in. It is pretty tight in there, so I'm hoping for a good mixture of darker blues, lighter blues, and some whites. So I'm gonna go put it up on my century plant outside, let it start that process, and then we'll unbundle it and really let that air in there. Now, one really important step that has to happen at the very end of all of this is that is we need to take our pieces back to a neutral pH. They've been sitting in a vat environment that is high on the alkaline side, probably in the 910 range, and it's good to get it back down. So we will do a final rinse in a vinegar bath, and it'll be nothing more than a splash of vinegar in some water, and we'll let those pieces soak to just bring them back to that neutral pH. Ready? Should we unravel it? Let's do it. Thank you so much. That's it? Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. Yeah. So it's got an error, but yeah, I love it. it turned out so cool. I like cool. The, the darker part on the bottom. Yeah. So the inside's never going to get that much. Like I would have had to like take it out and flip yeah. it over or something. It looks like light, um, like photographs of like fluorescent lights. Like that's how bright it is. Let's take a look at the results. I love it. I absolutely love how dark I got. I did dip this three times as well. And just the different shapes and things that came through with those random chopsticks in and then the accordion fold in the triangle. So. I really love that it's mixed up, not quite uniform. You know, the inner is always going to be more white because of all of the folds, but still some of it came through, and I absolutely love how it turned out. All right, guess what? It is time for me to head back to the United States. I have had almost two months of the most glorious time exploring natural colors in Peru as well as here in Puebla, Mexico. I would like to thank Architopia, the residency I've been working with now for almost two and a half years, and Maria down in Peru who just was so generous as well as everyone here in Puebla including my very fun artist in residence and this incredible garden and I just feel so very lucky and thanks to you all of you for joining me cheering me on and being so interested in natural color just like me so one more day again I gotta pack up I gotta head back home to the Pacific Northwest and I'm off to a whole nother adventure 
So I'll share a little bit more about that next week, but know that we're going to be looking at natural color this time in the wet world of the Pacific Northwest and mushrooms. So have a great week and I can't wait to see you next Friday back home. Take care.